Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Manti. An appellate court recently has upheld a law in New Jersey that limits magazines for guns. I'm going to introduce you to a man that's going to take that ruling, hopefully, to the Supreme Court. Scott Bach is the executive director of the Rifle and Pistol Association in New Jersey. Thanks so much for coming back. I Great. really appreciate it. So let's talk about what the law says and what the ruling said first. Okay, well, the, the law is a law that passed in June that says if you continue to hold on to magazines between 11 and 15 rounds, in other words, over 10 rounds in New Jersey, you become a felon for keeping, or the equivalent of a felon, for keeping property that you lawfully acquired. So nothing's grandfathered in, you have to turn them in. There's no grandfathering. The, the, you have limited options under the law. You can modify them, you can turn them in, you can sell them to those legally entitled to possess them, which basically means law enforcement or out of state. They're standard capacity magazines pretty much everywhere else in the country. And the appellate court ruled that you are not taking anyone's right to self-defense away by limiting magazines, and so because there was no constitutional violation, it was fine for the state to do that. Is well, that right? Th yes. That's, that's what two judges of a three-judge panel said. The third judge issued a scathing, lengthy, very well-written dissent, which we believe will be the basis for an eventual U.S. Supreme Court decision. Well, explain to me then, because I would assume you disagree with the two judges, how limiting the number of rounds in a magazine takes away you, your or mine right to self-defense. Well, sure. Uh, listen, the law shouldn't limit your choice or your availability of firepower when it comes to defending your life. In a true emergency, you are on your own. and. You know, the, the idea, I mean, New Jersey since 1991 has had a 15-round limit, which is arbitrary. And when they passed that, they said, that's all we need, everything will be fine. Now it's 10. Tomorrow it's going to be 5. Eventually it might be 1, and the eventual goal is none. There are people who are just hostile to the right of law-abiding citizens to own and use firearms for personal defense. And this is, a, this is a way, you know, it's a waypoint along their path. So are you more concerned about what might happen rather than what is happening? Well, we're concerned about both. That's why we're drawing a line in the sand right now trying to get this issue before the U.S. Supreme Court. We're not daunted by the fact that the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, the middle level appeals court, turned us down. The Third Circuit is known to be very, very liberal and hostile to gun rights. Our goal from the start of this case, we, we brought this case the same day this law was passed in June of 2018. And our goal is to get it to the U.S. Supreme Court. And this is not the only case you're taking to the Supreme Court. No, no. We have another one on right to carry, which we've discussed previously on this show. And, and so you're hoping that both of them are, are taken? Are there, other, uh, are there other similar suits around the country? There are. There, there actually are. There, there is a procession of cases in places like New Jersey where there is a, a, an anti-gun mindset, like, for example, in California. There are cases pending throughout the country on the carry issue, not so much the magazine ban issue because very few places actually have a magazine ban. It's kind of an oddity. It's not the norm in the United States. Let me give you the position against your argument. Sure. The people, the, the people that say, uh, look, nobody's trying to take away your guns. You hear that all the time. All the time. Nobody's trying to take away your guns. We just want to make it so that there's not these scary guns, that you don't have the capacity to fire off 15 shots in, in 15 seconds. We don't see the reason for that. Right. I mean, of course they don't. And by the way, there's no limit on the number of 10-round magazines you can own. You can change a magazine in under a second if you're proficient. So in point of fact, this doesn't stop somebody from having firepower. You know, the other thing is the law... But why is that needed, I guess? Well, why is that firepower needed? Well, let's say you're a single woman, okay, living alone with a child, and you have a home invasion. Should the law limit that, that woman's right to defend herself? Should she have to stop? If she needs to fire that firearm to defend her life, should she have to stop because a politician thinks the difference between 10 and 15 rounds is going to make that difference? I mean, in point of fact, the only people who are going to pay attention to this law are law-abiding citizens. Criminals are going to ignore it. So who is being regulated here? When you look at the, the net effect of this, it only affects 
people who follow the law. People who don't follow the law are going to ignore it. They, ironically, will be at an advantage over that woman because they'll be in there with their 30-round magazines, and if that woman wants to comply, she's going to, in, the, in the dead of night, out of a dead sleep, she's going to have to deal with changing magazines in the dark. You have two new members of the Supreme Court who I don't think have taken up, I know one has, and I don't think either of them have taken up a Second Amendment issue yet. Do you have any idea how they would rule? Well, we, we don't actually know, but, you know, we, we certainly believe that they would rule more favorably than, than the prior court before those two justices were on the court. So you, you're hopeful with the two cases you're bringing. There's been, uh, there's been eight gun legislation laws passed by this governor, or not, sometimes not passed, executive order. Right. Um, are you going to challenge any other ones? Yes. Um, you know, the chief among them is um, the mental health bill, which basically, listen, the, the part we disagree with on that bill is there's no due process. There's no advanced due process. They can take your firearms if somebody merely accuses you before you've had your day in court. That's not right. It's called the red flag laws. There's different ones in different parts of the country. There are some constitutional ones where you have your day in court before you lose your constitutional right to own firearms. Is there any gun control that could be put forward that you would find reasonable? Sure, sure. for example, on the mag ban. The key thing that's missing is it needs to be limited to people who are criminals or engaged in criminal activity. Right now, it's possession. It, it, it criminalizes mere possession, which takes New Jersey's million-plus law-abiding gun owners and puts them square in the target. It regulates them instead of the criminal. If you add to it that you have to be in possession of this thing and be engaged in criminal conduct, we'd be behind the bill, okay? You know, we, listen, we get it. Okay, and it's just that there are people who hate guns so much that they're just in a lather to do something. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate talking to you. Scott Bach is the executive director of the Rifle and Pistol Association. Jersey Matters continues after this.